Welcome back to Better Built Life, you guys. Today, we're going to be working on something we've never done before, and that is a home water heater. A couple of days ago, of course, inconveniently during the middle of my work week, I came downstairs, came out to the garage for something, and I heard water running. So my first initial reaction was to go check all of the toilets in the house to see if there was a stuck flush handle and there was not. I continued to check the rest of the house for any running water and everything was turned off. So again, I came back out to the garage and I located the source of the running water. You guys will please have to excuse the clutter within my garage. But as you come around here, you will find my water heater and downstairs AC closet. I gotta tell you, I've owned this house for 12 years and this is the first time I've actually looked at my water heater. I've had no issues and had no need to look at it. So, I heard the sound of water rushing within this closet, opened this door, and sure enough, this uh, wood floor here within the closet was completely soaked and dripping through the floor and down onto the garage floor here. So I realized that there was a leak within my water heater and I quickly turned off the water supply valve up there. I attached a hose here to the water heater drain valve and I drained all the water out of the water heater. Now that was two days ago. <laughs> like I said, it was during the middle of my work week. And now today, unfortunately, is Easter Sunday. One of the issues that I believe I'm gonna have is that I believe that water supply valve is malfunctioning and not closing off the water completely. The reason I say that is because two days later, I still have water coming out the bottom of my water heater ever so slightly, and it also is still draining through the hose that I've connected to the drain valve on the bottom of the water heater. Now, if you follow my other channel, AZ Off Grid, you'll know that I'm a hands-on DIY kind of guy. I like to do stuff myself but I've never replaced a water heater before in my life. Now let's take a closer look inside the water heater closet. Okay, this is the top of the water heater. You have your water inlet line and valve, which I believe to be not working properly. You have your little vent or exhaust hood from the water heater. This is a gas water heater. And then you have your outlet pipe which feeds hot water to your entire house now I don't know if you'll be able to see it I'm going to try to shine some light on it but if you look way back there let's get you in a little closer you see all that white stuff up there that's calcium we also have quite a buildup right down here where the hose connects to the water heater the first thing I noticed is that would indicate there's a leak or has been a leak within that pipe for quite some time. I would suggest that it's probably been many, many years that it's been leaking. The other thing to note is in Arizona, our water is very, very hard. And that is why we have so much calcium buildup on that pipe while it's been leaking all these years. But I had no idea that it was leaking all these years because I never bothered to take a look inside this closet. Now for reference, this is a Ream Guardian. Manufacturer date was 12, 2009. This is a 40 gallon tank at 40,000 BTUs. So this being year 2023, that water heater has been in use for I don't know, 13, maybe 14 years, probably 13 years. That's pretty dang good in, in uh, Arizona with the extremely hard water deposits that we have. 
So aside from the two water lines, the inlet and outlet line, you also have a gas line right here, which leads from your house gas supply into the water heater. And right here is a valve, and this is off, okay? I have it turned off. If it were turned on, I would rotate it counterclockwise, and these two nubs would be facing in line with the pipe. So first, I'm gonna disconnect the gas line, and once that's done, I'm gonna go up top and remove the two water lines. All right, guys, so the gas line removal, really easy. The water lines were a complete pain in my ass. But this thing is completely free. Now I'm gonna remove it. But before I okay, we got the water heater removed. This is what it looks like inside. It's a bit damp from the leaking water. So we've got a fan placed here to dry this out. And you'll see in just a little bit, that'll be completely dry. I've got a bucket hanging over the water inlet valve because that valve doesn't quite close all the way. It has a slight drip. Let's go take a look at the water heater. Here is the water heater. And I laid this on the ground and just rolled it a bit. And yes, there is, it sounds like there's rocks inside there. That's how much sediment is inside this water heater tank. It's quite a bit. I don't see where it's leaking from the bottom of the tank. It must be somewhere inside. I can't see it from the uh, bottom of the tank, but uh, it's definitely leaking. So time to replace this water heater. So let's go spend a thousand dollars. Okay, we're out to the truck and here is the grand total. $949.56. That was pretty close, close to $1,000. So if you want to replace your water heater and you go with a 50 gallon, like I did, gas, natural gas, and you get everything that's required to install it, it's gonna cost you close to $1,000. All right, let's get this loaded up, and get it back to the house. All right, you guys, here's the new tank. I've got it on the, uh, like a piano dolly right now. It's pretty heavy, it's 165 pounds. I've already got my Teflon tape there, and I've already got my two new hoses ran up there, and I put in my tank straps. Just tucked out of the way until I get the tank in here and I can strap them off. So, if I were younger, I'd try to move this thing myself, but I'm gonna go grab my 18 year old son and he can help me stuff it in this little closet. Okay, so I ran into a little bit of a snag and now it's the next day. So first thing first, we did go ahead and get the water heater placed in this little closet, as you can see. And I did go ahead and level it out with some shims. It wasn't level at all. Um, I connected the gas line, used pipe dope, here on the threads, both of these threads. I have not turned the gas on to check for leaks. I've uh, just loosely just kind of checked my straps to make sure that they're gonna work out. I'm gonna have to get those adjusted once I get the little clips put on the end of these. And then I hooked up my water lines and here's where I ran into a bit of a snag. So these water lines right here, they're flexible. I don't know if you can, you can bend them, they're braided. But in my situation, these I found, they're not gonna work and I'll show you why. So I have very little space above my water here. I don't know, maybe 10 inches, 11 inches. The issue is this. I don't know how well you're gonna see it in here because uh, it's kind of dark, but water supply comes out of the wall Here's the end of the valve here. And that's where it goes into the tank. So that long flex line over there, which I still have this one connected, it's just not gonna work. Cause you can see it's, it's pinched right here. 
and it's putting so much force down here where it connects to the, to the tank that no matter how much I tighten this, it is not sealing off and it's leaking out of here. That's why I have these rags up here right now. So what I, what I ended up having to do is uh, go get the old uh, pipe from the, the last water heater that I just pulled out of here. This one looked okay and I uh, got it to fit on there pretty good. You, you can see you have to kind of loop it around and down. Um, but there's no kinks. It doesn't leak here or here under full pressure. So this one's good to go. But the other one, I had to go back to the hardware store. And I picked up three different sizes of these. One of which I believe, yes, it is this, this length. And I'm going to have to put it on the other side. So this is uh, what I picked up. That worked out well. Um, damn, Soka. Sheesh. Anyways, um, what is this? 12 inch, 15 inch, and 24 inch. I'm not sure which one I have over there. I think it might be the 15 inch. It's already on there, the, the old style. So one of those are going to work. So for right now, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on that. It's kind of a pain getting back in there with a wrench, actually two wrenches. It's a bit of a pain, but I'll get it swapped out. Um, I'll go ahead and get these straps put on. And uh, I'm going to talk about a couple other issues that I noticed on my last tank that I'm going to have to fix, but I won't end up fixing them in this video. But it's uh, some, something I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, that need to be done with this tank. So. I'll get back with you guys here in just a flash. Okay, so we got the new copper hose hooked up to it, and I ended up using the shortest one. I think it was 12 inches. Um, ended up working out pretty good. I just had to tweak it a little bit. I don't know if you could see it, but uh, I'll try to give you a better, better angle over here. Nope, nope, that doesn't do it. Anyways, you can kind of get an idea. I had to manipulate a little bit, but it works out pretty good. It does not leak. This thing is under pressure right now. It's been under pressure for about 15 minutes. Zero leaks. Okay, so right now I'm gonna go get a spray bottle, put some water and some dish soap in it, mix it up real good. And then I'm gonna spray my, uh, my new gas fittings here. And I'm even gonna spray the old one just to make sure it's not got any leaks in it um, after I turn on this uh, gas valve. So I'll turn the gas valve on. Spray the, all these fittings real good with that soapy water. See if there's any bubbles. If there's bubbles, that means there's a leak. And I gotta make these tighter. Hang on one second. All right, guys. Got my soapy water in my wife's purple spray bottle. Um, gas is still off. First thing I'm gonna do is turn it on and listen for any, any obvious leaks. I don't hear anything, I don't smell anything. So now we're gonna start spraying. You might wanna put a rag beneath, just so you don't get soapy water everywhere. All right, guys. No bubbles. That's what you want. It means it's not leaking. I'm completely happy with that. So let me wipe all this off real quick. All right. We're good to go. Now it's time to light this puppy. Okay, so... The destructions tell us to, for one, 
turn this to pilot and then we're going to hold press in and hold for 90 seconds it says to keep holding this down there's a black button right here you got to pop it in press it in like 10 times and it's supposed to light i've seen some people take up to like 20 presses on this to get it to light and then there's a little light right there that'll start flashing blue Okay, so I don't know what the deal is. I can actually start to smell the gas now. And it still hasn't lit yet, so we're going to keep working on this. Okay, it looks like the pilot is lit. It took considerably more than 10 presses of that igniter switch. Um, I couldn't tell you how many. <laughs> I didn't air all of them in this video because it was a while, but I was probably pressing on that for a good minute solid. Still waiting to hear the burner come on. Now I'm not going to hear it because my AC just kicked on. Okay, so stupid me. Uh, the burner was not going to kick on because I still have this directed at pilot so i need to move it to one of these temperature settings here and it just kicked on like that <laughs> that's all it took to fire this puppy up awesome all right we're going to let it heat up we're going to exchange some water throughout the house some hot water make sure nothing's leaking and then we'll uh, go over a couple things here at the end Okay, so it's been about an hour. The water is nice and hot. I got to do the dishes. Um, came out to the garage. Nothing's leaking. Nothing's burning. No explosions. It all worked. So, this is the finished product. Very simple. A couple things I want to end this video with. Number one, how long did this take me to do this? Well, unfortunately, I ran into a couple of snags, which I talked about earlier in the video. So I've already had everything purchased, like the water heater, the uh, thread sealer for the natural gas pipe, the uh, two pipes up, up top, the, the copper hoses to connect the water supply, and um, the tank straps. If I had all that purchased already, this job, realistically, would have probably taken me about two hours to complete from start to finish, from ripping the old one, draining the old one, ripping it out, putting the new one in, probably two hours, maybe two and a half hours tops. Okay, a couple of key things that I wanna point out. Um, I don't know how the inspector missed this when I bought this house about 12 years ago, but this water heater had no no tank straps. This was all that was connected right here at the pressure relief valve on my old water heater. And it was just like that going nowhere. So if there was ever, ever an overpressure situation, water would just spray right onto the floor. I don't know why they didn't go ahead and plumb that to a drain because it could easily go right over here to my condensation line from my AC, which is a drain. I'm gonna end up doing that in the future. And the other thing is, is this pan, while nice to have in the event of a leak, was never plumbed also to a drain. It just drained right out here onto my floor and caused me quite a bit of work. So, to end this video, um, just a suggestion, don't 
don't do like I did and wait 12 years to look at your hot water heater. And I only looked at it because I heard water running and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And this ended up being the very last place I could think of. And sure enough, it was leaking all over my garage floor out that way. So give it a look every once in a while, you know, maybe every six months to just take a look at it. And I would suggest, and this is what I'm gonna do in the future from now on, is I'm gonna hook a hose up to that valve, that drain valve right here, run it out my garage. And once a year, I'm just gonna open that up and just drain the tank and get, get any kind of sediment or whatever's in there, just get it out of there. It'll help prolong the life of this water heater um, and just keep things working better. So, all right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. This is my very first time installing a water heater and now I know how easy it is with a couple of crescent wrenches. I mean it, two crescent wrenches. That's the only tools you really need for this job. Um, you can swap out a water heater. So, you guys take care, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.